Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, React and Chill. I'm Dika. So last time on Fruits Basket, uh, we found out what had happened to um, Izuzu. She was being kept, not hostage, but she was being kept in the cat cottage. Uh, Akito caught her trying to take a box from her room. Now, this was obviously something that um, Ren made her do, uh, which is pretty shit because I feel like she got her involved between herself and Akito or this ongoing feud between the two women. Hiro <laughs> finally apologised to Hatsuharu, telling him that he felt bad, he wanted to see Rin, Rin, um, goodness, I'm going to get their names mixed up. So yes, um, Hiro wanted to apologise for what had happened. He still felt guilty about what had happened to Izuzu. So he finally told, I didn't realise he never told him, he finally told Hatsuharu what had happened and Hatsuharu turned off on violence at Akito's door and I really wish he did punch her in the face because that woman is pissing me off. Apart from that, um, he um, was able, he mentioned to her and obviously Haru, when the other Zodiac members did find out she was in hospital, they didn't know which hospital she was in because she was being kept captive and obviously Karina went up to the rescue who was able to follow one of the maids and he found out where they were keeping her. Now, um, I liked, like last week's episode, we finally concluded, well I'm hoping Izuzu finally concluded her journey with what she was trying to find out. Her main goal was to find a way to break the curse, because there is a way to break the curse so that Haru could be free. She did it all for Hatsu Haru in the end, at the end of the day. So, um, but unfortunately it got caught up between Ren and Akito and their drama. So I'm glad that they were, were able to get her out and obviously uh, Hatsuharu finally was able to bring her home. The thread's unravelling a little bit because Hatsuharu was sort of, I think, pulling away from Akito and Akito was having a bit of a breakdown. Again, I really feel like uh, this impression of her being like the chosen one, uh, the god person, must have become warped. So now I really want to know more about Akira. I want to know where this relationship between her and Ren, like what had happened in the beginning for that relationship to completely um, disintegrate. And I forgot to mention last time that yes, it was um, it was because it was Honda. Because Honda's looking for Izuzu to speak to her after finding out what she did. I think she could speak to her in regards to what she had found out and wanting to get more information. So that's why Yuki was able to speak to Hatsuharu, who usually knows where she is, but he was able to finally rescue her. Oh my gosh, but yes, I'm uh, excited to see where we go from now. Um, a lot of, um, I wonder with the knowledge Honda has, how she's going to use that to be able to help, because she's aware of what's going to happen to Kyo. So how she's going to use that to help liberate him. Now with, hopefully, I know Izuzu was quite standoffish, but I'm hoping she'll be able to get her on her side, and we'll see what happens next. If I remain cursed forever, will you leave me and seek happiness elsewhere? First, first and foremost, oh my goodness, when I found out that Christopher Savat, the voice of Ayame, A way to ruin the moment. Oh my goodness. She needs, deserves to know that I'm not a normal human. Mm. If you just stay in there long enough, the world will shape itself to your will. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Shigure is on some next level. I don't know. I wonder if these two will ever fight. I wonder if, even though Shigure is older than Karino, I wonder if they'll ever like... Become a mama man. Yikes. He's practically a man now. <laughs> oh dear. Let's get ice cream on the bed. Yeah, I'd be shocked. And you're even more handsome than you were before. What? Me? I'm handsome? 
But I want people to see that I'm a man. If you didn't know any better, you'd think those two were a couple of lovebirds. I told Miss Honda about the hospital. Then you found out the address. We'll get lots of flavors. And maybe an ice cream cake, too. <laughs> Shigeru moves mad when it comes to Akito. That's why I can never tell whose side he's on. What side he's on. For me, kindness is nothing more than a hastily manufactured afterthought. If this is what you call being twisted, suppose that's what I am. I can't even find that sad. The point is, I'm not a nice guy, so why should I bother pretending to be one? Warning. But still, <laughs> if the person who's forced to make dinner <laughs> for us is fine. Miss Honda? Oh, I got distracted. I was wondering what that was. <laughs> yeah, this ought to do it. What, what are you planning? <laughs> well grilled steak. You're eating here too? It's okay. We went with curry. If this keeps up, I'll be taller than you. And probably better looking. When I propose to her, Taurus will actually say yes. It would sting him a bit. If some other guy took Toro from me. We make curry for dinner. She's dreaming of that. I thought it happened. Momoji! Don't go. I thought she was dreaming, but Momoji, the curse actually broke. What was that? All those feelings inside me, but not of me. I don't see it. What has kept me bound to this person for so long? Be with her. Momiji? Geez, you're up here of all places. He's gonna tell him. You just seem a little different. Maybe it's because my curse broke. She just. Just kidding. <laughs> I had you for a second. It's not like it matters though. Toru would rather your curse break than mine. You know, right? Shut up. I don't want to know anything about that, all right? Mm. It's too much. I spent the whole day trying to figure out what happened. Why is my curse gone? But I do know this. I can't spend the rest of my life by your side. <laughs> How dare you! You're a monster! A filthy traitor! You'll never be happy again! Ever! But that doesn't mean I'll get the girl I want. Everything is broken now, and there's no going back. Good morning. Hmm? Oh, Momiji, is that you? My goodness, I can't believe how tall you've gotten. I hardly recognized you. Any plans for summer? Will your family take a trip too? Don't tell me I can't find happiness because of the things I've lost. You're not the one who gets to decide that I am! 
that my happiness might be just down the road. Mm. Waiting for me to catch up. There will be a trip someday. With the family that I can make for myself now. It's time. My path is my own to choose. And I'm ready to take the first step. Well done, Mamaji. But I think that's just an echo of your own deepest fears. See you later. Choose. Take care of yourself. Hmm. I will. Oh my goodness, that almost got me towards the end. Oh. So, a lot of different things had happened this episode. One, um, we had in the beginning IMA Hitori thinking about um, their curse, and obviously, what IMA said, I've got a name to his assistant. You know, just stay with me, stay by me if I'm cursed forever. Um, she was like, I'll always be by your side. And obviously that's a tall order, being with one of the cursed family members. And finally, we got to see Momoji or <laughs> time skip Momoji turn up. I, was, I got so excited. My goodness, my emotions were like this, this whole episode. Um, so we met grown-up Momoji um and we there was a confirmation that he had feelings for toru as well obviously he even mentioned that at the beginning that um i'm i'm glad that i got a little taller there's certain things i could i can't i can't get away with or do anymore but i'm glad i've become a man now and in a way i think it's kind of reflecting on toru because hopefully she will see him as a man and there was that confrontation in the bedroom when he even said to Kyo that, you know, Kyo was like, you know, you've got so much more taller. And I was like, yeah, he was like, even I could probably come and take Toru right from under you. Basically calling Kyo out to say that, you know, I know your feelings for her and you shouldn't give up. I'm not going to give up. At that point, I was thinking, I thought he was talking about his family, but I think his, his um, pursuing of Toru, like, I'm not going to give up. So you better not give up because someone might just come and take her from right under your nose. That's crazy. We had... Um, Kisa and Hiro coming to Shigure's house um, and obviously Kisa speaking to Kyo and I've got, I don't know what the, their parents tell them about Kyo because they're very aware of Kyo being the cat spirit so um, she was happy to sort of at least speak to him or bring up the car to speak to him we had that bit with Shigure talking to um, Hattori about how he's not and I knew this from the get go he's not a nice person he, he's never felt like him being cursed was necessarily bad you know the sort of kindness he he can't show that sort of kindness like Hitori does or Kareno does so he called him he basically owned up to the fact that he's not a, a good person which in fact is true and I guess even H Hitori said why you know you're older than her why do you keep doing this why do you always go to her like this and I guess it's almost it comes back to that toxic relationship he just has with her I think he just can't seem to exist in a world without doing that to her uh to akito so that was really good uh yuki was actually ready to tell machi before uh kimi and um um kakuru turned up and the way she just sidestepped but he the fact that he wants to tell machi you know about the curse so that is saying something that's incredible unlike how toru had found out about the three of them right at the beginning in season one about their curse he he i think machi is one of the first people he actually wants to tell because it's clear that he's obviously developing feelings for her and she's developing feelings for him so he wants to be able to let her know his circumstances which is incredible considering how far both of them have come along oh my gosh and the biggest thing in this episode that momoji's curse broke i thought that dream she was having was remembering um Hatsuharu because his one's like um, tethered a bit but Momoji's curse broke and there was a lot of things he said and like I said that nearly got me in the end how he felt confused because yes the bonds that were bonding him to everyone else are now gone and he felt so alone but he felt this amazing sense of freedom now um, and oh my god that bit when Kyo found him on the roof and he, Toru would not be as happy to find out if my curse had broken compared to if your curse had broke. He said, um, I, I was still stung, I still lost. You know, you do know basically saying that you're the one that she wants. 
and then Kyo didn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to hear it. He's very aware of where his future lies, and he was just like, you know, don't say stuff like that. And I think it was very evident that Kyo, as much as he cares about Toru, doesn't want to even entertain the idea of being with her, or having a future with her. He's already so. Yeah, that bit with Momoji and being able to speak to his mom in the end. He even, I mean, Akito is up to her tricks, trying to say that who's going to accept you, who's going to want you, and it's so true. He would have felt so alone. He was like, he didn't expect it to happen so soon, and everything that was, he felt alone. Everything that was bonding him to all the kids, everything, the collective um, companionship he had with the Zodiac members is now gone and that's definitely going to affect him because but he's right in saying he's now going to be able to look forward and move forward in the future because he's never felt so free and I'm glad he said that to Akito to basically say that I get to you don't get to decide what I do now I do and it's weird and it's the same thing that happened with Karenna when they broke away from the curse they finally see Akito for who she is she was such a small he's like he doesn't even know who this person is but he was so confused everything rushing back to him so that was incredible and I'm happy for Momoji and I think he's hopefully taking the steps to build his own future, to build his own happiness now beyond Akito and the Zodiac signs. The last thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about Shigure was how he spoke about this thing with Akito even then it's because he dreamt of her. He dreamt of this being that he was meant to meet. I wonder if he said something to Toru then when he leaned in to whisper in her ear because he was like, I was wondering if it would have been different if it was you I dreamt of um, instead of Akito and we saw a glimpse of Akira again which was telling Akito but you would never be alone so I think something has definitely happened between when Akira died to present day or you know, that timeline I feel like there's something must have happened I know it's got something to do with Ren as well but I'm um, be very intrigued. But wow, another. I'm just making sure I check my notes. That I've covered everything. I'm happy for Mimiji. I'm happy that now he could move forward. Because the first thing I thought of was he could finally be with his family. Um, and hopefully he's also pushing Kyo not to give up on Toru as well. You know, to keep fighting for her. So that's that's really sweet. Um, but yeah, I think that covers everything. I might just watch that episode again. That was such a good episode. Oh, I wonder if Momoji... Momoji has said to Akito no one's going to know, but he had come to the conclusion that he's not going to stay on the Soma estate. He's going to go out and make his own future. I wonder if anyone else is going to find out, apart from when he pretended to tell, not to tell Kyo. I wonder if anyone else is going to find out that his curse is broken. And I wonder... Like he said, he could, you know, he could... He may not be able to have the family with, uh, sorry, he may not be able to have his old family back, but he can start his new family. And I think that's what he's worried about. He was going to be not tied to the other Zodiacs, but no, this is going to be interesting. This, oh, but yes, that was it for this episode. I really enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, let me know down in the comments below what you think so far of the dynamics of the Soma family, who your favourite characters are. Moji is one of my favourite characters next to I um, and I do like IMA. If it's your first time here, do give me a like and obviously subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I drop another one. Thanks and I'll see you guys next time.